Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 101, we're going to continue our series on how to achieve great sound by taking a first look at cables. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult the professional technician when in doubt. Well, first off, a big thank you to everyone who sent well wishes to help celebrate our 100th episode last week. And wow, the orders almost overwhelmed us. Thankfully, we were fully caught up by Monday afternoon. Thanks to Charles' hard work. <laughs> well, we were both working pretty damn hard. Anyways, it was great to see. Um, in our continuing series on how to achieve great sound, we're going to look at cables or interconnects. And it's such a big topic, we're going to split it up into at least a couple of episodes. Today we're going to look at what materials, construction, make for a quality cable. And in part two, we'll start talking about sonic differences and why there are sonic differences in cables. Okay, let's just jump right in and have a look at some quality cables. Hang on. Okay, so I bought a nice turntable a while ago and look what it came with. It came with a RCA patch cord. So a right channel, a left channel, and a ground, a ground uh, lug. And it's not your typical cable. This is actually a twisted pair. And what is that? Well, in an unbalanced signal, which is what RCAs carry, and which is about, oh, I don't know, let's call it 98% of home audio is patched with, You've got a center conductor, that's your audio, or your positive, and you've got a ground return and a shield combined, and that's over here on the outer connector. So what they do with a twisted pair is they twist the ground and they twist the signal wire together, and then they just carry the uh, ground lug right here in the middle. And this is a perfectly viable way of carrying an audio signal cleanly. And the reason why it works is because when you twist the two wires together, your positive and your negative, or your signal and your ground return, however you want to look at this wire, these wires, they have a noise rejection effect because they're twisted. And it's not as good as a shielded cable will be, but it, it gives you quite a bit of noise reduction. And it, it gives you a, a, very, um, a very direct path. There's no fooling around. You, you just twist your wires, connect them up, and Bob's your uncle, you're done. Is this the ideal way to do it? I don't know for sure. Um, Paul over at PS Audio said way back when they started, uh, they made up their own interconnects, and that's exactly what they would do. Now, they probably were just taking a uh, 22-gauge wire, like this, and twisting it together. Now, let's just put that aside. Now, even though we're going to be looking at your typical RCA cable, it, it, it makes sense to look at what's actually inside your amplifier, right? So, this is a typical hookup wire inside one of our kit amps. It's 22 gauge. It is a double jacketed wire with a fiberglass silicon outer jacket that's braided. Let me get it up close so you can see it. And because it's a braided wire, it'll fray. So you need to finish the end. A lot of cables need to be finished and you'll see in a minute how a typical RCA cable is finished. So in this case, inside my amp kits, you just have to put a little boot of heat shrink in Bob's your uncle. So what is this? This is 22 gauge and it's multi-strand. It's a heavy strand, so not fine, fine wires. And of course, if you're going to be connecting that to something, you would put a little twist in it, right? And then it would most likely get soldered or tinned for a, a junction connection. 
So that's what most of our kit amps are hooked up with. What about this? Well, this is a little bit more of a refinement of this because this is an unshielded wire and this is a 22 gauge wire with a braided shield. It's copper and the wires are all arrayed right now out and it's not going to be nearly as heavily shielded as the big belding cable we're going to look at in a minute. But for carrying signals inside the kit amps, it's absolutely perfect. The shielding that's on this keeps the cables nice and quiet. And um, it's essentially, the center conductor is essentially this. It's just got an outer shield. Now, what does a wire braid on the outside or a foil jacket, there's a number of ways of doing it. What does that do? Well, it rejects noise that could get onto the signal path. And it does that for, with the physical properties of the metal. In this case, most of these braids are going to be copper. This looks like, um, like silver, but in fact it's tinned copper, which is very common for high quality wire. This center conductor here, that's tin copper as well. And of course you tin wire so it won't corrode in oxygen or in the environment that it's in. Um, so now let's take a look at, um, at, a, at a demonstration cable. This was made up for us by Blue Jeans Cables of Seattle uh, and I use them exclusively for cables professionally and in my home system and this even though they made this up for free out of the kindness of their heart <laughs> uh, I'm in no way um, beholding to them I made an order for all sorts of uh, you know bits and pieces that I needed uh, for the shop and uh, and for the home system um, and, and actually for the headphone uh, prototype amp and we we paid full price for them so but the reason why I'm matching blue jeans is because they are a smaller um, outfit that has superb quality, good pricing. They're for me, they're close. They're in the Pacific Northwest. They're in Seattle, and I'm on Vancouver Island. And um, so there's actually a fast ferry. So someday I hope to go and visit them, and um, and just see the shop and and see all the cable. I mean, you got to be a real nerd to want to go see a bunch of rolls of cable. But anyways. Um, so, they made up a demonstration. Now, what this is, is basically a partly assembled standard RCA cable. They call this their LC1. And these are wonderful. They have a nice bit of stiffness to them. And so, in the kit amps in particular, we, um, our interconnects all come in from the top. So, we're always flying cables across like this and you don't want some wimpy little cable doing that and even if you're interconnecting in the back it's nice to have the right length of cable that just sort of sits there and doesn't flop around now the wonderful thing about blue jeans is that even though they have standard lengths they'll make any cable of any type you know whether it's digital or audio they'll make it to your precise specifications to your well, their specs, your length. <laughs> Anyways, I've had great results with those guys. So let's see what they did for a demonstration. So, this is Belden Cable. It's, Belden is an American uh, cable manufacturer and they, are, they make great stuff. So, here's your center conductor. This is coaxial, of course. And coaxial just means that we've got, we've got two wires concentrically around each other, whatever. You know what it means. So inside here, this is a little ferrule or a little tip, let's say. And um, inside here is a 25 gauge conductor wire. Just like over here, this is 22 gauge. So this is a little lighter gauge. And there's no easy way to mount this up in a connector unless you solder it through the tip which is an old-fashioned method of doing it. 
This is much more refined. So what they do is they press this on, this little fitting, and here is one of the connectors. Now the connectors they use are Tabersol connectors and they're really a nice quality connectors. And let me see if I can get this all arranged so you can see how it all goes. So here's the ferrule. That's gonna let's get this on here. Should have done this off camera. It's a snug fit. I've had it on before. It'll go. There we go. Okay. So what this little tip does is it actually clicks into here. Now I'm not going to put it all the way in and click it, but this is how it assembles. It goes on like this. The braid will come over here onto this part here. The ferrule will go over and then it's going to be pressed like this and and a finishing cap is just pressed on. Let's see if we can do one for you. There you go. And that's basically all there is to it. Now let's look a little closer at the construction. So in the center we've got our audio. Around it we've got a non-conducting um, insulator basically. And around that we've got a, a braided copper double layer of shield. Now why is that important? Because it, it rejects noise. So if your cable is passing, let's say, by an AC, um, let me see if I get an IEC cord here somewhere. I do. So often in the back of units, you're going to have AC unshielded wiring up your amps. If this passes nearby, you're going to have potential noise right on the surface of this and radiating off a little bit or a power transformer, or output transformer, you name it, um, or even worse, a switch mode power supply, this will reject that noise. Now it connects, as, it connects up to ground right here when it clips on to your RCA. So the outer housing of the RCA jack is the ground, the center is the conductor. So what are you looking for in good quality cables? Well, you want a good quality end. You want a good quality cable itself. The physical cable, I like to have some heft to it because as I described how we have to patch our amps together. Um, and I don't want it so stiff that it won't bend. Well, this bends beautifully, but it also stands beautifully. So it's just perfect. You want a nice, neat fit. You want to be able to grab properly here to insert without doing any damage to the construction. So um, it's not hard to see why I really love this cable. And the, the really fun part is you don't have to pay a fortune for them. And you can get the right length. So, I mean, what's not to love about that? Now, cables are in the cat one of the categories of snake oil sellers. There are three broad categories. One of them is power cords. Another one is interconnects. And I never remember the third one. Charles is over here. He might remember, but... <laughs> um, Oh yeah, um, isolators. That's your three big broad categories. Maybe isolators are going to bring improvements to your system. Maybe power cords will bring some improvements to your system. And maybe interconnects will bring some improvements to your system. But they don't need to cost a fortune. So watch out for people selling cables for huge money there's a very good chance that they don't sound as good as something like a standard blue jeans off the shelf. Okay, well, that's part one of how to achieve great sound with your cables. Now, what's happening over at Melatone Kits? Well, Charles, we've been really busy, haven't we? Oh, very busy. So we've put some time finally into the GU50.
Uh, we put a fair bit of time, but we've gotten some great results with it. And we now have a working circuit. You're going to draw up the, um, the schematic. The power supply and the main amp schematic, yep. And probably next week we'll, have, we'll publish the schematic um, and we'll go over the initial prototype design. Uh, I still need to build a second channel. It's a monoblock, of course. <laughs> yeah, so we've only been listening to one channel so far, but it sounds pretty darn good. Yeah, and I think the standout is is the yes, it's got great drive. It's an eight. It's going to be an eight watt monoblock running in pure class A. Mm -hmm. um, but the standout is the level of detail. The level of detail and the noise floor is just incredible. Which is crazy because we started off with a different driver tube, and we ended up um, with a noisy amp. It, it sounded good with the fourteen AF seven in the driver slot, but it just wasn't up to the demands of the GU50 and then we switched it over to to the 6N6P dual triode and uh, just wow it is a fantastic driver tube yep yep and it's one of the things it was built for it can be a, it can just be a voltage gain preamp tube as well I mean it's it's amazing that this tube is not popular it, it's very versatile and everything that we've tried it in so far has just been it's worked great yeah, we've listened to it in the headphone amp. And it's, it works in the headphone amp. Um, I love the sound in the headphone amp. That yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's a great tube. Okay, so the GU50, hopefully next week we'll start talking more about it. And of course that means that we're getting closer to actually issuing it as uh, a kit for test builders. But we're still a little ways off. I've got to get that second channel built so that we can actually listen in stereo. You can only learn so much in listening to one channel of a stereo mix. I guess we could find a mono recording. It probably would help a little bit. But anyways, we need a second app. I got to build it. Yeah, the time is probably better spent building the second one. <laughs> okay. And Charles, you've been busy. You've been working on increasing our inventory of less common tubes. Yes, yeah, so some of you may have noticed that we added a section into the store called the Tube Zoo. And we mentioned it before briefly on video, but this is sort of an area where all the random tubes go into that don't have a place somewhere else. Uh, they're not one of the common audio tubes, or they are something that just doesn't fit into the other categories. So, we get in lots of tubes. We get in lots of tubes that... Uh, that uh, basically just don't fit into any other category out there and um, we know that some people are interested in them. We get messages all the time asking us to look into uh, finding a tube for people. So we're starting to add more of them into the tube zoo and here's some examples that just went in there right now. So this guy right here is actually really interesting. This is the 6SF5 and this is actually a single triode. Let's pop it out here. Gotta go the other way. <laughs> this one does not want to come out of the box. One moment. There we go. Okay. So the, it's a nice metal cap tube, and this is actually a single triode that's got a mu of 100 and spec wise it's very similar to one half of a 12 AX7. Of course it uh, precedes it or predates it by quite a bit but this would make a really nice high mu preamp tube. So this is now in the tube zoo. We have a number of these that are new old stock. They're very nice looking. We have there is the 6SH7 and this is a high mu amplifier pentode. Nice military box there as well. Not everybody might know what a mu is, or oh, how it's yeah. even spelled, right? Oh, it's a mu, it's the amplification ca factor. Right, and it's spelt as a capital M, small u. So there's another metal cap tube. And I believe this one is meant for radio frequency amplification. But, just like we discussed in the last episode, a lot of these tubes can be, re can be repurposed for audio amplification too. So this is something that might be interesting to fool around with. And our last one is something a little bit different. Another beautiful National Union box, like these old boxes. 
This is the VR-105. Now, what is a VR-105? Well, it actually stands for Voltage Regulator 105, and the 105 is the voltage that it regulates to. So the purpose of this tube is to take a voltage that's higher than 105 volts and drop it to a steady 105 volts with plus or minus, I think, 4 volts across it. So this isn't, so this isn't something that you would typically see in a modern amplifier or modern audio equipment, but it could be something useful for people that are working on, on older equipment or interested in building something new for themselves. Beautiful looking tubes too. So as we go through our stock, we're going to be adding more and more things into the tube zoo, just like this stuff here. But if you're looking for something specific, send us a message and we'll take a look and see what we have. Yeah, because we have thousands of tubes, ten, thousands. tens of thousands of tubes that, you know, we, we buy collections and we end up with um, what we were looking for. The audio portion of the collection goes into the store right away. But all of those miscellaneous tubes, many of them sitting new old stock in the box. Um, and it, it's a thing to uh, fix up old tube TVs and radios and, and test equipment. Yep. So as well as develop new gear based on tubes. So, exactly. Sometimes if we find a tube that we're interested in, we can go to our stockpile and say, oh, well, look, we've got some new old stock ones to play with. So it's a great resource and hopefully it'll be a great resource for you too if you're looking for something uh, a little bit unique or a little bit rare. Well, thanks for doing that, Charles. And this is going to be ongoing, right? Oh yeah. I don't see us not adding things into the section for quite some time. Okay. Well, a whole bunch of stuff came in. Just give me a second and I'll get some stuff up here for you. We'll start with these. Try not to make this too long. So a lot of you have been using these socket saver lifters. They've got a ceramic uh, core and they've got a brass body and they've been fabulous. The electrical connection is perfect. I haven't had a single problem with them. If there is a problem it's that the ceramic pin is slightly brittle. I, I shouldn't say brittle, it's slightly vulnerable. So I mean it's, it's like you know a china teacup for example so you can't misalign this or you might snap it off. Um, and you can snap off a plastic guide pin as well if you're not careful. Anyways, these have been very popular. I sell a lot of these and mostly to people that need to lift outside of a recessed top plate, you know, where the, they drop the, th why manufacturers continue to do this, I don't know. But anyways, they drop the socket down below the top plate and now your vintage tube is hard to get in and out safely without touching the glass or pulling on the glass. So these lift beautifully. Um, and the same manufacturer came up with a miniature nine pin. It's a little different, but it's very similar. It's got a ceramic center core. And in this case, it's got, I think it's aluminum. It's, a, it's got a powder coated finish on it. And he actually, I wanted brass and he said, no, he said brass tarnishes. He said, what you want is this powder coated silver gray finish because it disappears substantially if it's sticking up above a regular amps top plate. And I think he's right. Anyways, these are really well made and they're, they're affordable. So if you need a socket saver or lifter in the nine pin format, you know, a 12 AX7, 12 AU7, then these will be just perfect. Okay. On to tubes. That's always my favorite topic. So, Let's start over at this end here. Now this is a Philco box and it's a 6SN7GTA. Whenever you see Philco tubes, is a very good, Philco was a radio equipment manufacturer for, for homes in the US. But whenever you see Philco, they had a long, long relationship with Sylvania. So there's a very good chance a Philco branded tube was made by, yes, one of my favorite American manufacturers, Sylvania. So let's see what's inside the box. Well, it's a brand new 6SN7 GTA and it's a straight plate, which is the first version after the Bad Boys. And the GTA has a higher spec than the Bad Boys, so it's, it's, pro, it's less prone to becoming noisy. You can easily recognize the GTA because they put large chrome domes on them in this generation. 
the angle GTA had a little less and the older GTAs had a little bit more. <laughs> Anyways, these are some of my favorite sounding 6SN7s. They've got that warm, rich Sylvania sound. I call it the Sylvania house sound. Uh, and they've got it in spades in the GTA. And they've got an incredible amount of detail. Whenever you get warm, rich sounds and detail, you've got a really fine balanced tube because the more detail you have, the less second harmonics you tend to have, so the less warmth. The more second harmonics you have, the more warmth and rich sound you will have and the less detail. So having both means that the designers were really thinking, I think, carefully about the sonics of the tube. Anyways, I love these tubes. They're in, certainly in my top three 6SN7s. And here's another GTA. Let me see what I put out. The, and what really is great is I found a whole bunch of new old stock, new in the box, which is, it almost never happens. Um, and it was just pure luck. Uh, one of my suppliers, I bought a match pair off of him. And he sent me a note and said, Jim, are you interested in more 6SN7 GTAs, Sylvanias? <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> Took me about three seconds to hit yes uh, and hit a reply. So this is the angle plate version. So you see how there's a little less chrome. It's still quite a full chrome dome. The Sonics are very similar. The earlier, the earlier straight plate version, back-to-back -back plate, tends to be a little harder to match. They're a little older. They tend to be slightly more noisy, which means that the, the loss rate in testing is a little higher, makes them more expensive. These are a little younger, so they tend to test a little bit better. And sonically, I always give the edge to the older tube. It almost always is a little bit better tube, but they're quite close. And I have more of these, um, and they are um, also a great sounding tube. Here is a Jan CHS 6SL7 GT. Jan is Joint Army Navy. So this is a mil-spec tube. Normally you get a date on these, and there isn't one. Let's see if we can get these tubes out for you. There we go. This is the first generation of Sylvania 6SL7s, just like we were looking at the second generation of GTAs. And you can easily tell them apart. They've got oval plates. They've got black or gray. They've got a full waist chrome. And you can tell how the tube is aging by how much chrome you've got. These are new old stock, new in the box. And you'll often see them with or without the VT229. And all that VT229 is is the Pentagon's um, number for... Uh, Sylvania, I believe, as a manufacturer. I think that's what it is. And so VT229 and Jan 6SL7, same thing, basically. So don't worry about those, um, those military numbers. They really don't mean much to us. Let's get this up close so you can see them. Now, they came in gray and black plate versions. And as far as I can tell, there's no difference. The black and the gray is a coating that's put on the plates. It has some electrical properties. What they are, I don't know. They're probably some of the best sounding 6SL7s ever made. Um, very much like the Sylvania 6SN7s. And you might say, how can Sylvania have hit two home runs? Well, you got to remember the 6SN7s that we were looking at and the 6SL7s we're looking at were made in the same plants at the same time. They had the same designers, they had the same materials, and they had the same assemblers. So it's not surprising that the tubes sound very similar. And here's a later version of the Sylvania 6SL7. It's a tall boy. They've taken the getter from the bottom and moved it to the top which is quite common with more modern tubes. So you get a chrome dome as a result. Plates are very, very similar to the earlier version. The coating got a little smoother. And these are less prone to noise because they're newer. 
and there are sonically they're very similar there's some differences and again i often will give the edge to the older version there's some kind of magic that happened in the 1940s and 50s i don't know what it was maybe it was just the tolerance for using dangerous chemicals in the factory but <laughs> whatever it was um you know those tubes are getting rarer and rarer uh but if you want a if you're looking for the longest lived version of the tube always go for the newer generation because there's a good chance you can find the new old stock and there's a good chance um that they'll they'll, they'll be that they'll have slightly longer lifespans because remember if you're comparing a 70 year old tube to a 50 year old tube that's two decades of difference so it can make a difference in how long a tube lasts okay and i've saved the best to last i'm just going to do these quickly because we don't have much time left i went through um i have been going through our power tubes to see if there's anything we can discount I know times are tough for some people out there, and there's a discount quad of RFTs. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They're testing just a little bit lower than I'd like to see, but they, they're going to sound great. There's probably a spare even available. You can give me a shout. They're heavily discounted. They're in the store. You'll see them listed with a DISC beside the number. If you don't see the discount listing under RFT 034s, uh, they're gone, and um, I saw the discount Muller DL34s last week. It took an hour, I think. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, they went fast, though. And somebody actually sent me a note and said, I missed uh, the good EL34s. And I said, let me take a look in the bin. And I found another discounted uh, Muller quad, and he bought them right away. They were gone in a minute. So, <laughs> anyways, um, the RFT is one of my favorite EL34 is so one of my favorite power tubes. It's got detail. It's got good warmth. It's got, did I mention it's got detail? As an audiophile, detail is where it's at. I remember uh, selling some tubes to one of our kid amp builders and he, had, he sent me back a note and he said, you know, I, I thought I was the warmth guy and then you sent me those 6SN7s. And he said, wow, I don't think I'm a warmth guy. I think I'm a detail guy. <laughs> so you never know until you try something, right? And last up, but not least, is I got a whole bunch of S Svetlana KT88s. And these are rarer than hen's teeth. And I've got a quad that are testing again, a little bit lower than I like to see. And we've actually got them in the app right now burning in. And they sound amazing. It's the Svetlana, the real Svetlana, the St. Petersburg version, with the square punch outs on the plate. Um, they haven't been made for a long time now. Um, they are probably one of the best of the KT88 types. I've never heard anything close to them. Anyways, there's a quad in the store if you want them. And again, they're marked with the DISC. Okay, well, if you stay to the end, Here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, we've got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Stay safe, everyone. Have fun. Cheers.